Donald Trump on 2020 election interference. He says he had every right to do it. Chris Graham here at Augusta Free Press. Donald Trump did everything but confess in a Sunday night interview with Fox News MAGA guy Mark Levin to interfering with the 2020 presidential election, that is. Uh, here was the quote. Whoever heard you get indicted for interfering with a presidential election where you have every right to do it, Trump told Levin. As the ex-president who faces a federal indictment over the effort that he directed to overturn the 2020 election results, tried to brag about his poll numbers because, of course, that's what he was doing. And in fact, that's where the confession came from. He was saying, oh, I've got great poll numbers. And then they're trying to say I interfered in a presidential election. I have every right to do so, he said. That confession should make special prosecutor Jack Smith's job that much easier when he finally gets to try his case next year. Notably, the Levin guy handed a confession, didn't push back at Trump, and he, even tr he didn't even try to get Trump to walk back what he had just said. Note to MAGA. I know that folks like to comment uh, on these videos and say that I'm lying or I'm misrepresenting things and that Trump sits for all these interviews. This isn't what you call an interview when a subject confesses to a federal crime and the other person in the conversation shrugs and says, okay, you push back. You ask a follow-up. <laughs> That's an interview. When a guy confesses to a crime and you just sit there and, and you know do nothing, that ain't an interview. That's just, that's just two dudes talking. Fun fact, this Levin guy, according to his bio, is supposedly a lawyer. He probably wasn't a very good one. Another fun fact, he was also a never-Trumper. How you like that, MAGA? This guy, and he, he, he kissed the ring, so, you know, don't go after him. But uh, a lot of a lot of folks on that side are, were never Trumpers until they decided to kiss the ring. I wonder why they kissed the ring. Mm, personal reasons there. And if you need this fact checked, shame on you. But no, a candidate for president does not have every right or any right to interfere in an election. Trump world followed 62 lawsuits challenging the 2020 election, and you know what the results were. They were 0-62 in those <laughs> lawsuits. Now, that's the right that any candidate has, president or dog catcher. You have the right to challenge the conduct of an election, the results, and, you know, court of law. Once the courts have had their say, there is no right accorded to a candidate to call a state election official to get them to find you more votes. There's no right enumerated anywhere that allows a candidate to whip up a crowd to, I don't know, for example, overrun the U.S. Capitol to try to stop the certification of an election. This is the crux of the fresh federal charges against Trump, with a new indictment handed down by Smith just last week that addresses the Trump court's effort to put its finger on the scale. You might remember the Trump court back in July ruled that Trump is entitled to immunity from criminal prosecution for what it termed, quote, official acts. And then it sent the case back to a federal district court to sort out which charges would be allowed to stand. That's why Smith filed new charges and got an indictment from a grand jury on them. The editing work visible in the new indictment includes the removal of references to the Justice Department and the emphasis on Trump using his campaign to, quote, make his knowingly false claims appear legitimate, create an intense national atmosphere of mistrust and anger, and erode public faith in the administration of the election. The new indictment also makes the case that Trump got advice on the execution of the scheme by people, quote, acting in a private capacity. He's just taking out all the references that this Trump court decided were uh, untouchable uh, in a federal court regarding a president, their favorite president. And so I, interesting note here, a lawyer uh, hired by the White House to represent Trump during the Mueller 2016 election interference investigation, kind of pattern here, thinks Trump faces serious prison time from the charges. He was in an interview, Ty Cobb, that is he, uh, was in an interview with CNN host Aaron Burnett last week. And uh, Burnett had pointed out that uh, he the, the total sum of the charges, if he were convicted, Trump were convicted on them, would be 55 years. Uh, Cobb said, you pointed out 55 years of the exposure. He's not going to get 55 years, Cobb said, but he'll get six to nine on those charges. Uh, Cobb uh, you know, said that um, the, the new indictment is going to withstand, in his opinion, the in any test from the Trump side, it's pared down. Every sentence is. It's crispy word, crisply worded. It's a tight narrative. You can't read this and not understand the crimes that Trump actually committed. And um, uh, let's see. He also said the facts haven't changed. And as you pointed out, he said to uh, Aaron Burnett, the charges haven't changed. They're the same charges. They're easily proved. And um, 
That was before he confessed on Fox News. That is Trump confessed on Fox News. Um, I like this uh, this quote I found online from a former federal prosecutor, Joyce Vance, uh, about the Trump interview. She used a term that I had not been familiar with before, had to do some research on, and it really fits. Uh, her quote was, this is the banality of evil right here. Trump asserting he can override the will of the voters to claim victory in an election he lost, and he will do it again. So what does the banality of evil mean? It dates back to the philosopher Hannah Arendt, who coined the phrase in relation to the 1961 trial of Nazi leader Adolf Eichmann for his actions in directing the Holocaust back in World War II. So um, Hannah Arendt uh, was hired by the New Yorker magazine to cover the uh, trial of Eichmann, which was held in Israel in 1961, many years obviously after World War II. And Arendt was struck by how unremarkable Adolf Eichmann was for a guy who was the architect of the Holocaust that killed millions of people. And um, the term banality of evil is evil that becomes so ordinary that we don't see it for what it is. And when you, hmm, when you look at the flood of comments that you're going to see on this post, in addition to if you go back to other things in the Aggressive Free Press, Chris Graham Channel archives here, recent archives from Bongo supporters. Um, yep, checks out. This you know, evil has become so ordinary that we just don't see it for what it is. Hey, if you got any questions for me, any comments, feel free to email me at chris at augustafreepress.com.